let me take you straight into what I want to share with you today then. Ezekiel 37. I'm going to read to you from verse 1. A long portion. So just get ready. Make sure to follow the reading of the scripture carefully to understand it. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit. Now, there are some important details to observe as we read because um, you're going to need them. You know what I'm going to explain to you? The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones. So there was a valley full of bones. Now, um, the, the word that's translated here, valley, actually connotes a wide, a wide valley, so much so, it's described as a plain. So not a, a, a narrow valley that you would just call uh, maybe something from your immediate imagination. And that's why you're likely to see in some translations the term used is plain, on a plain. Says and caused me to pass by them round about. So, in the spirit, the prophet Ezekiel was made to move around this wide valley, to go round. Now, remember, he is in the spirit. He moves around in the spirit. He says, and behold, there were very many in the open valley. And lo, they were very dry. Many, many bones, human bones. And they were very dry. Meaning there's no flesh on the bones. And he said unto me, son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Again, he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. That's remarkable. Now remember, he is in the spirit. That is very important. Like when we read in the book of Revelation, in the word tells us, what John said, he said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. So the things that he saw and heard, all of that he experienced in the spirit while he was at the island of Patmos. 
Now we have Ezekiel looking at this valley of bones, very, very dry. And God tells him in the spirit to prophesy upon the bones or to the bones. And he says this, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Verse 5 says, Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones. Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. He's talking to the bones. He's prophesying to the bones. And I will lay some news upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you. And he shall live, and he shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. And behold, a shaking. And the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. So suddenly these dry bones became corpses when he prophesied to the bones. They became corpses. And remember, he is not physically in a valley. He is not physically with the bones. He is in the spirit. All of this is happening in the spirit. Verse 9. Then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, thus saith the Lord God. Come from the four winds, O breath. So God's telling him what next to do. Did you notice he prophesied? But um, the first part of the prophecy is fulfilled and now he is told to prophesy a second part of it. Verse 9 again, then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind, prophesy son of man and say to the wind. So when he prophesied to the bones and said to the bones, now let's go back and look at the content of the prophecy to the bones. I want you to remember this because it's very important. I'm reading from verse 4. And he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God unto these bones, behold, I will cause breath to enter into you when you shall live. And that's even the first part of it. I will cause breath to enter into you when you shall live. And I will lay some news upon you and will bring up flesh upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded and I, as I prophesied there was a noise and a shaking and bones came together bone to his bone. It says I looked and Lord the sun news came and the flesh came up upon them and the skin covered them above but there was no breath. I thought the breath was the first one to come. But there was no breath. Then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy son of man. In fact, the same word, just for the record, so you understand. The same word that's translated breath is same word for wind, same word for spirit. And so you'll find... Uh, different translators 
using their discretion to decide which word to use because almost any one of them would go for the statements. For example, in Psalm, verse 9 would read, Then he said unto me, prophesy to the breath. Because it's the same word, rock. Prophesy to the breath. Some would say, prophesy to the spirit. Same word. Prophesy to the wind. Okay? All right. Just so you understand. So, then said he unto me, prophesy unto the wind, prophesy unto the man, and say to the wind, thus saith the Lord God, come from the four winds. You see, this is the reason some of them thought that um, the first wind should be breath. Prophesy to the breath. Because it says, come from the four winds. So, it didn't seem to make sense to them to say, oh, wind, come from the four winds. So, they changed that and said, oh, breath. Come from the four winds because same word anyway. Thus saith the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me. And breath came into them. And they lived and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. A sitting great army. Another term that's translated army there is gathering. Another word, congregation. An exceeding great congregation. A sitting great gathering. A sitting great army. It's talking about a large number of people. Now, this is wonderful. The prophet experiences this in the spirit. And he is back to himself. He's just been in this vision. Look at the 11th verse. Then he said unto me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Now, This is remarkable. It says, these bones are the whole house of Israel. So it was symbolic. It was symbolic. Behold, they say, our bones are dried and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. Therefore prophesy and say unto them, see now, he's prophesied in the spirit. And God tells him what you saw in the spirit represents the house of Israel. They are the dry bones. They are in the spirit as dead men. Very dry, hopeless. And they know it. So he says, now you go prophesy to them. He's already done it in the spirit, you see. He's already done it in the spirit. In the spirit, they got up. He saw they got up. They, they became, the first became corpses from very dry bones. Then he prophesied to the wind and the winds came and um, the breath got into them. And then they stood up, a mighty great army. So he comes in the natural now. And therefore he says, prophesy and say unto them, the children of Israel, thus saith the Lord God, behold, O my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of your graves. And bring you into the land of Israel. He's going to bring them from captivity. Back into the land of Israel. They thought it was a hopeless situation. So I'll bring you out of your graves. And you shall know that I am the Lord. When I have opened your graves, O oh my people. And brought you up out of your graves. And shall put my spirit in you. And you shall live, and I shall place you in your own land. Then shall you know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and performed it, saith the Lord. Remarkable. 
the word of the Lord came again unto me. And here's another, another prophecy he gives to Ezekiel. Remember that's first one, okay? Now here's another prophecy. He says, Margot, son of thou son of man, take thee one stick and ride upon it for Judah and for the children of Israel, his companions. Then take another stick and ride upon it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel, his companions. And join them one to another into one stick, and they shall become one in thine hand. Now, he's using symbolisms. So he tells him to take a stick and ride on it, Judah and his companions. Then he says, take another stick for Joseph, in the hand of Ephraim. So, and write upon it. This will represent Israel. Remember, there were two nations right from the days of Rehoboam. They were split into two nations from Israel into Judah and Israel. Judah being two tribes, Israel being ten tribes. So that's the way they went on for a long, long time until both went into captivity. So now Ezekiel is told, take one stick for Judah and take another stick for Israel, represented by Ephraim. Ephraim was the most prosperous and in, in became the, the name that represented the northern kingdom. And let's say, bind these two sticks together. Now, here again, he's doing something in the natural, but he's been, he's been instructed from the spirit. See, God's talking to him. So he takes this, these sticks, binds them together, and the people are watching him. Like, what in the world is he doing? So he's doing this in the natural. But he's being instructed in the spirit. So in the 17th verse, join them one to another into one stick and they shall become one in thine hand. And when the children of thy people shall speak unto thee saying, will thou not show us what thou meanest by this? Aren't you going to tell us what you mean by this? He says, say unto them, thus saith the Lord God, behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim and the tribes of Israel, his fellows, and will put them with him even with the stick of Judah and make them one stick and they shall be one in my hand. This is an extraordinary prophecy. Extraordinary. Listen, Father. And the sticks whereon thou writest shall be in thine hand before their eyes. He says, you're going to do this in their presence before their eyes. Okay. And say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, whither they be gone, and will gather them on every side and bring them into their own land. And I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel. And one king shall be king to them all. And there shall be no more two nations, neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms anymore at all. Mine, oh my. I'm going to make them one country, one nation. One nation, not two. So, Israel, as you even see today, is a fulfillment of prophecy. It's one nation. They have become two. One with the headquarters in Samaria. The other with the headquarters in Jerusalem. Praise God. Now, don't be misled by uh, the, the current problems they got there where they have the, the Palestinian issue, the problem where they say we want two nations. 
that's not that's not in reference here. Okay, he's not talking about um, a Palestinian nation and a Jewish nation. This is prophetic of uh, Israel and Judah coming together as one. That's what he's referring to in this place. Glory to God. Okay, now let me show you another prophecy, another very vital prophecy. You go to 1 Kings chapter 13. I'm going to read from verse 1 to verse 5. And behold, there came a man of God out of Judah by the word of the Lord unto Bethel. And Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. And he cried against the altar in the word of the Lord and said, O altar, altar. Ah. The first prophet we read of Ezekiel prophesied to the bones, very dry bones. Now this one is prophesying to the altar. Prophecy is not only to people. We just saw Ezekiel prophesy the bones, very dry bones. Now here's this unnamed prophet, but he's prophesying to the altar. It says, oh, altar, altar, thus saith the Lord. Behold, a child shall be born unto the house of David, Josiah by name. He mentions the name of the child that will be born. And upon thee, upon thee, altar, shall he offer the priests of the high places that burn incense upon thee. And men's bones shall be burnt upon thee. What a prophecy. Because so much evil had taken place there. And this, this, this prophet of God comes to prophesy judgment upon the altar and upon the land. Next verse. And he gave a sign the same day saying, this is the sign which the Lord had spoken. Behold, the altar shall be rent and the ashes that are upon it shall be poured out. And it came to pass when the king Jeroboam heard the saying of the man of God, which had cried against the altar in Bethel, that he put forth his hand from the altar saying, lay hold on him. And his hand which he put forth against him dried up so that he could not pull it, put it, pull it in again. His hand remained like that as he pointed against the, the prophet that he should lay hold and arrest the prophet. His hand stood out like that. He couldn't take it back. Verse 5. The altar also was rent. It was split, it was broken, just like the prophet said. And the ashes poured out from the altar, according to the sign which the man of God had given by the word of the Lord. This is interesting. And the king answered and said unto the man of God, Entreat now the face of the Lord thy God. Pray for me, that my hand may be restored to me again. And the man of God besought the Lord. He prayed to God. And the king's hand was restored him again and became as it was before. Glory to God. About 300 years later was when this prophecy was fulfilled. Can you imagine that? They would have thought he was a false prophet. Nothing has happened. They said nothing has happened. And, and different kings came died and left. This is interesting. About three centuries later. Let's read. Second Kings chapter 23. Now, a king by the name of Josiah that was mentioned had been born by this time. And he became king from the age of eight. Now let's read this beautiful story from verse 15. And the, where is it? Moreover, the altar that was at Bethel and the high place which Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who had made Israel to sin, had made, both that altar and the high place, he broke down. Josiah broke it down. 
and burned the high place and stamped it small to powder and burned the grove. And as Josiah turned himself, he spied the sepulchers that were there. This is interesting. It wasn't planned. The Bible says as he turned himself, he, he spied the sepulchers that were there in the mount and sent and took the bones out of the sepulchers and burned them upon the altar. Wasn't that what? He said, men's bones shall be burned on thee. He sent and took the bones out of the sepulchers and burned them upon the altar and polluted it according to the word of the Lord which the men of God proclaimed who proclaimed these words. Three centuries previous. Then he said, what title is that that I see? And the men of the city told him, uh, it is the sepulcher. He saw another one, another sepulcher. He, he, he had asked him to bring out the bones from the various sepulchers. But he saw another one. He says, what title is that that I see? And the men of the city told him, it is the sepulcher of the men of God which came from Judah. Now they tell him the story. Came from Judah. That's many years ago. And proclaim these things that thou hast done against the altar of battle. And he said, let him alone. Let no man move his bones. So they let his bones alone with the bones of the prophet that came out of Samaria. Ah, that's wonderful. That's the, that's, remember the story, the old prophet who said he would like to be buried in the same, in the same sepulcher with the young prophet who he lied to and uh, met his death. Praise God. Very significant stories. Significant stories because first you see he tells us about Ezekiel being in the spirit and being shown things in the spirit. So first is to see it in the spirit. And then he's given words to speak. And he speaks them in the spirit. Then he comes in the natural. He's been told what he saw in the spirit. And what all that signified. It's important to interpret correctly. They interpreted correctly. And let the children of Israel know this had to do with them. Now he prophesies to them, having already done it in the spirit. Of course, that prophecy will come to pass many, many years later. But what we see here is the power of God's word in the mouths of his prophets. He speaks to dry bones. The other prophet speaks to an inanimate object, an altar. But they both spoke as they were instructed by the Spirit. Having previously seen this in the realm of the Spirit. Glory be to God. You know, when, when, when we were watching the documentary a moment ago, and I was thinking, what goes through the minds of a lot of people sometimes they think of so much insecurity about food about government policies and so on and so forth but we're not in this world as victims we have to remember that God put us here 
to maintain the peace. That's actually our responsibility. We ought to keep the world the way God wants it. So you have, you have others who have a bad job. They work with Satan to frustrate the nations, to destroy the world. But we have a good job. And our good job is to work with God to give peace to the nations, to give health, healing, blessings to the nations. I shared with you last time when he said, if they shall drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. These signs shall follow them that believe. If they shall drink, assimilate, imbibe any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. It's a sign. It's not something that you're, you're supposed to pray should happen for you. No, no, no. It's a sign of who you are. It's a sign of what you're made of. You don't need to pray that it should be fulfilled in your life. No, no, no. It's about who you are. You're born again. You have the life of God in you. You have the nature of God in you. When you're born again, the life of God supplants the human life with which you were born of your earthly parents. That's why Jesus said you must be born again. But you know, they're not, there, there are a lot of Christians who don't really know this. And because they don't know this, they live as humans. And a lot of times suffer the experiences of humans. But this is why spiritual growth is necessary. Spiritual growth, spiritual upbringing is necessary. You have to be brought up. You have to be trained in the life and nature of God. See, like human beings, when they're born, they are raised to live like humans and not to live like dogs. Remember, at a certain point in your life, you were even learning to sit. And maybe your parents were happy. Oh, he can sit now. At a point, you were crawling. Crawling, creeping, and everybody was excited. But that was not the way you were supposed to be going forward. At a certain stage, you were to be taught how to walk with your legs, your two legs. Not creeping. Creeping time was fun time, yes. But it was not supposed to continue. You were to be trained in how to walk. And so some adults started picking you up, teaching you how to walk, trying to stabilize you. And you're learning to walk with your legs. Finally, they let you go. You were able to carry yourself. It was exciting. They were clapping for you as you were moving with your two legs. And everybody was excited. Come on, go ahead. And before long, you started running. And probably running for your school and running for your country. Blessed be God. That's the way it is spiritually. See, at a certain time, you're like everybody else. But you can't stay there for too long. Can't stay there for too long. Oh, at the point, headaches, colds, fevers, stomach problem. I get just everything that humans suffer. But the stage comes where you must change. The growth. 
growth. Where you don't get sick. You don't. It doesn't happen. It doesn't happen anymore. You come to that point in your life. You don't. You don't. And then there's no such thing as an infection, you know. It's an infection. No, no, no. All that story ends. If they shall drink any deadly things, shall not hurt a sign. A sign of who you are. Say, but if you don't know it, if you're not raised in the spiritual, say in the pneumatica, if you're not raised, how are you going to know? So there's a spiritual training. That's necessary. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory be to God. I want you to make sure you set the dates, participate in the Your Love World specials this week, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Don't miss them. You're going to learn God's word. It's going to bless you, inspire you. It's part of the development. It's part of what God is bringing your way to help you grow and become stalwart spiritually. It's important. There's nothing that builds us like the word of God. If you look at the book of Acts, Chapter 20 and verse 32 says, And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up. The word is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance, deliver to you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. Glory to God. You need it. So plan for this week. Wednesday, Friday, Thursday, and Friday this week. Don't miss it. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. So why am I sharing these things with you? Because this month of May is the month of prophecy. You are going to prophesy. You're going to prophesy. God's going to put his word in your mouth. You're going to speak forth the word and it'll come to pass. You're going to speak forth the word. You speak into the heavenlies. You will speak words about your family, about your future. You're going to speak words about your city, about your country, your nation, about the, the world. We're going to saturate the spiritual atmosphere with God's word. This month, you will prophesy. Hallelujah. Pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Speak in other tongues. It's a month of prophecy. La coramanda gila grasse te kila braconda harabagastas. Donda gila grosta para hando caradigasastes. Soja la mante kila bragastes. Cron de black de la consul sechile mande. La gradiga posa carabacasea. Raba kasunda la bogosi karaba babahaya le gredesto kosa bakila mando kombarondo zigra haleges so krasande le grebaso shalamande kia raba gasaya rakonda la brageso shalamande le groso ta karaba kasete raga sande le gebraso te korasia le nde santa brako sele gris Sata Rabaka Sante Kura Masaya Lente Koba Sakara Mandele Gebro Sonde Gilebra Casia O Shata Kabaka Barabaka Sita Koba Sota de Kabosh, 
Go ahead and pray. The reason. Manto Cobra Sikaraba Kate Likis Dashalamande. 